Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have a new dose of revenge stories for you to enjoy. Subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Sit comfortably. Our first story. Where the F are you from? So this is a very, very petty revenge. To set the scene, I live in a small European country, and the older generations here sometimes can be incredibly xenophobic, which I really loathe. I'm a linguist, and my husband is pretty into languages as well. We like to speak different languages together for fun and practice. So about three years ago, we were going home from an event, a theater visit, I think, which had us a bit dressed up, think tux and long dress. We were on the subway because parking downtown is hard, and at that time of the day, it was faster than a cab, when I noticed a total Karen with her husband sitting down right across from us. She immediately gave us a look, apparently disturbed by our attire. My husband kept on talking to me, and in a moment, I hear Karen go, can you see them? showing off their money, effing Russians. This made no bloody sense, like, what? I nudge my hubby to pay attention to them. Her husband gives a sigh and reacts, honey, calm down, and I don't think they're speaking Russian. Of course they are, listen. On cue, I switch language and hubby follows. We end up keeping the conversation, alternating all the languages we can manage. Spanish, Italian, French, German, Japanese, some Serbian, and of course English. I can see the pair listening with raising frustration quarreling about us the whole time. After about three more stops, we get up and get off the train. The Karen actually gets up and yells after us, where the F are you from? We smile and wave, and my husband shouts back in our native tongue, locals, have a nice evening. And our next story. Drive like an a-hole, pay money. A bit of backstory. I'm a 28-year-old American guy who's been living in southwest Germany for a little over two years with my German wife. Though my German isn't the best, I know enough to get through daily life out here and understand just about everything when I'm paying enough attention. We live in an apartment with a small parking lot for guests, and each apartment has one garage big enough to fit one car in each. If a guest comes to visit us, the size of the parking lot makes it very difficult or near impossible to get in and out of the garage this is all important later. At the time, I was working at a small cafe about a 10-minute drive from our apartment. My job was extremely strict with working hours, so I was in at 7 a.m. and out the door and in my car at 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. After about three months of working there, I noticed every day on my drive home that the same blue car with a black stripe down the middle was either in front of me or behind me every day up until I parked at my apartment to where he would continue down the road. No biggie. I just assumed it was someone with the same type of work schedule that lived in the same small town as me. After a while, I noticed every time this guy was behind me, he would take any opportunity to overtake me, even though there were always about 20 to 30 cars directly in front of me going the same speed every day. It was a two-way road with one lane going each way, all the way to where I lived. I thought nothing of it. I knew I was a slower driver since I didn't fully understand the German rules of the road yet and didn't want to take the chance of getting a ticket or worse, so I was used to people passing me even though I never went under the speed limit. Anyways, this went on for a while, with him still passing me almost every day, most of the time cutting me off, making me slam on the brakes. On one particular day, he was extremely impatient and aggressive, to where he tried to pass me in a one-lane roundabout to where he almost sideswiped my car. He ended up bailing from the attempt and fell back behind me. At this point, I'm PO'd, but I hold back my anger and continue to drive normally. About five minutes later, I'm almost home driving up a pretty steep winding road with very tight turns. As I'm near the first bend, I see a man on a bicycle on my side of the road, so I veer to the middle of the road to give him some room while I pass, and I could see there was no oncoming traffic. At this exact moment, the a-hole tried to pass me again, almost hitting me again. I couldn't move to my right or I would have hit the man on the bike. This a-hole again bails from his obviously idiotic and dangerous attempt of passing me again and continues behind me. I finally get to my apartment and when I park, for some reason I looked in my mirror and who do I see parked behind me? You guessed it, the a-hole. And he looked P.O.'d. 
I don't know what this guy plans on doing, and I have no intention of finding out. So I get out of my car and instantly go to the back of my car and grab the tire iron, but keep it hidden so he doesn't think I'm going to attack him. He gets out of his car, where I say to him in my broken German, Can I help you? He immediately scoffs and asks, Where are you from, Sheila Slender? It's a very rude and disrespectful way of saying foreigner, something like effing foreigner. I ask him, does it matter where I'm from? I live here now. He scuffs again. I started a whole speech about how people like you are the problem with this country and I shouldn't even be here and how you should be thanking me since it's my tax money paying for you to be here. Side note, I came here legally and between me and my wife's jobs, we live pretty comfortably with no government aid. I stop him in the middle of his rant and say, you don't know anything about me. And what does any of this have to do with you driving like an a-hole? At this point, it looks like he's seeing red and continues to scream obscenities at me for about 30 seconds. He's suddenly interrupted by a loud, hey, where a man wearing a helmet runs right up to him and slams him against his car so hard it cracks his window with his back. I'm so confused for a bit. While this man has pinned him to his car, absolutely enraged, screaming at this a-hole, then it clicked to me. This is the man on the bike. I didn't understand everything being said, but it was something along the lines of, you almost killed me. WTF is your problem. The shouting went on for about two minutes until the man on the bike forced the a-hole into his car and made him drive off. As much as I wish, this isn't the end of the story. About a month goes by, and on a Saturday night, I come home from shopping as we turn into our apartment parking, the only way into our garage is blocked by a car. The car. Blue with a black stripe. My wife notices that I'm more PO'd than I should be about this because we'd had this situation before with other cars. Everyone that lives in this apartment is very nice, and we all have each other's phone numbers in case of emergency, or for this kind of situation. It's normal to receive a text from a neighbor at least once a week asking if we have a guest parked in the way, we don't really have friends in this area, so it was never our guests parking there. So my wife starts to send out a text asking for whoever has the guest if they could kindly move the car. While she's doing this, I'm calling the landlord who's told us multiple times if someone blocks our way to the garage to call her so she can call a tow truck. Obviously, nobody in our building does this because it's usually not a big deal and a simple text could solve it all. I tell her what's going on and give her the details of the car. I hear her let out a sigh. Him again. Okay, I'll deal with it. And she hangs up. Apparently, this man has given another neighbor of ours problems before. I tell my wife not to send out the text and that we should go get a coffee instead. There's a cafe directly in front of our apartment parking. My wife looks confused but says, okay. We're sitting in the outdoor part of the cafe with a clear view of the apartment parking while I explain to her the whole story of this guy and what he did last month because I never told her about it before. Eventually, I see a tow truck in the apartment parking. I point it out to my wife, and she almost can't contain her laughter. I wasn't able to hear much, but eventually the a-hole noticed his car was being towed and ran outside his car, which was already on the truck. All I heard was a lot of screaming, but I didn't understand anything. The truck driver eventually left with his car, and the a-hole was just standing there, he looked across the street and noticed my wife and I watching the whole thing. I smiled and waved, took a sip of my coffee. He walked back inside with utter defeat. I later found out that the a-hole is the father of one of the girls who lives in the same building as me. She knocked at my door the next day and asked about the situation, which I explained everything. Thankfully, she was very understanding and even apologized for her father's behavior. She also told me this isn't the first time her father's anger got him in trouble. My wife, being the nicest person in the world, made her cookies later that week to show no hard feelings towards her. She laughed, told us her dad had to pay 400 euros to get the car back. She was actually pretty happy her father got what was coming to him. After that, we actually became pretty good friends with her and her boyfriend. Now every time the a-hole comes to visit his daughter, he parks his car across the street and won't say a word to me. And as far as I know, he drives a different way home from work. And our last story. Never call me at night. This happened about a decade ago while working for a large, mainly red, big box retailer whose mascot was a big red plug. I was a supervisor who closed the store, often as an acting manager. When closing one night, there was a problem with the alarm, so I contacted the ops manager to let him know. 
I was yelled at over the phone to never effing call me at night, you POS. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm a very revenge is best served ice cold type of person, so I decided to remember this. A few weeks later, there was a fancy new key box installed on the wall in the warehouse. Warehouse workers needed to have keys to get into locked areas, but they had to check them out and leave something like a driver's license or car keys behind so they don't walk off with the warehouse keys. One huge oversight was that only two people had the key to unlock this box. The store manager and the ops manager, who both work opening shifts into afternoons. This was the first night with the fancy box, and I was the closing acting manager. Warehouse associate tells me his car keys are in it, and he can't get home without them. I call store manager, who lives an hour away. He tells me to call ops manager, and we hang up. I was about to call when I remember that I was a POS and was to never call him at night. So I took a crowbar and ripped this box off the wall. Now there's a nice hole where it was in the drywall. I then smashed the crap out of it with some other tools we had laying around the warehouse. By the time the keys made it out of the box, it was hardly recognizable. I placed it on the ops manager's desk along with a note saying, Sorry about your box, associate needed his keys. Next day, I walk in at noon for my shift and immediately get pulled into the store manager's office with ops manager and get read the riot act. I just sat and waited for my opportunity. Finally, they ask why I did it. I remind ops manager of the phone call. Store manager had no idea of this prior call. Store manager asks ops if this was true. He sheepishly replied, yes. Store manager says, well, sounds like this is your effing fault then. Get out of my office. I stayed behind and BS'd with the store manager for a while, then got to work. Loved that store manager, despite that ops manager. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.